Hey everybody, welcome back to another show. Today is September 10th and well, it's a Friday, right? Yeah. <laughs> Friday, Friday for 2021, but you watch it for a different day. It might not be a Friday. I mean, you can always come back to our past episodes because it's more like tied to the day. Right. Right? Or the date. The date, not the day. Not the year. Because let's say maybe next year, September 10th is going to be on a Thursday. I don't know. Yes. It's or Saturday. To the the date. number. Day. The number. Yeah. The number day. So today is September 10th. We are almost end of the year. Yes. That's Question, weird. are you going to change your wallpaper? I did. After, no, after, after we're done with summer? What do you mean? Oh yeah, it had to be fall theme. Yeah, that's, we got two more weeks. It's a seasonal thing. Yeah, but I change it by the month, not by the season. Oh, you change it by the month? I, I never noticed. Yes. Wow. Wow, Jr. Well, let's move on to stuff that is you know constant, constant. Consistent. Yeah. Huh? And that is the observances. Oh. And the first observances we are going to talk about is. National Come hot dog. On. Why are we talking about food already? It's Dead. like the start of the show. I told this to Ian. I'm going to tell you this too. For world peace, we need to talk about food. Food brings us together. That's and... that, well. Realistically speaking, yes. Because if people are hungry, right. they tend to uh, what do you call this? Get grouchy. Right. And uh, they 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 started being uh, very sensitive. Mm, yes. Combative. Okay. There you go. So besides tasty food, you know what's better than tasty food? <laughs> tasty drink? No, besides, what? instead of having just having a tasty food, right? What's better than tasty food? If it's... If it's... Free! Oh! <laughs> oh yeah, you're right! Of yeah, course. of course! Tasty uh, food and free, they should free go... Free and uh, tasty food is... They should go together. The best. The best. The best, because you know why? I'm sorry, I forgot. I even had like an experience of free food lately. Yeah, because it's like, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a thank you for being an awesome person. They, they buy you food. Thank you. So back to this, what is your favorite hot dog? Do you like What's chili my cheese dog? Oh. What condiments do you like on it? Onions. Not, not chili Relish. cheese dog, but. You don't like chili cheese No, dog? no, have you tried cheese dog where it has a. Uh, Fries? No, it, it, it has it has cheese inside. The oh, hot dog. the hot dog has cheese inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh -huh. I tried, I tried a uh, corn dog that has cheese inside. I never tried a hot dog. Which yeah, is, I mean, uh, it's still the same. I thought it was a common thing, but it's mm. I guess more like a Filipino thing. I think but it's yeah, really they hard. do. So, what what do you put on your hot dogs? Oh, uh, of course, ketchup, mayo, and uh, mayo. I never tried mayo. Yeah, ketchup, mayo. For mayo. Me. You know the thing about mayo, mayonnaise, and, and honey mustard. Always honey mustard. Really? I'm not a mustard guy myself, oh. but honey, I, okay. I want honey mustard. A little bit of sweetness to it. Huh? <clears throat> yeah, because honey. Uh, I mean, regular mustard. It's kind of strong for me. Really? Because I feel like. Uh, Back to the mayonnaise, right? I feel mayonnaise makes everything much heavier. Richer, because it's rich, yes. Because it's like mostly egg whites. Mm hmm Ugh. For me, how about other stuff? Like you don't put veggies in it? No, no, unfortunately oh, no. No onions? Oh, well, yeah, onions, relish. I guess. Not relish. Not a fan of relish either, so. Uh, what does that put? The celery salt in your salt or pepper? I don't know, because, I, I mean, usually the hot dogs that you buy in stores are already are flavored they're already seasoned right so adding more salt just kind of makes it stronger at least or uh, i don't know saltier well so. yeah so so what kind of onions do you like do you like grilled onions or the chop the chop onion chopping yeah Where's i, I like the crunchiness because the hot dog already is uh soft it's kind of like a it's kind of like a coolness to it too the hot dog and is hot mm -hmm. and we buy into that uh balance out the temperature right there right right mm -hmm. right what kind of bun do you like hot dog bun do you like uh, plain or like sesame I think I just like plain. I, I as far as the bun is I like concerned, the ones, I don't so have any preference. Do you like it toasted or just soft? Oh, um, a little bit toasted. I can go either way. I'm trying to think of other uh, stuff you can put on. Are you some people put uh, peppers like uh, jalapenos. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, green peppers. I guess so far. Pepper. So far, right now, we're talking about the uh, the regular way of uh, preparing hot dog, which is in a sandwich, but. Uh, amazingly, hot dogs can also be part of a lot of dish. Really? How so? Well, there are, um, I guess, Filipino dishes well, that yeah. we use. Ah, spaghetti. We put hot dogs on spaghetti? No, that's just the hot dog meat. We're talking about hot dog as the entirety, which is the bun. Oh. Like, so it should be called hot dog sandwich. No, no, no. And by the way, no, is it no. a sandwich? Would you consider a hot dog a sandwich? 
because the bun is not separated actually. <laughs> it's still a sandwich, it's still in between. I mean, between bread. two bread buns. Yes. So, is hamburger sandwich too? Yes. It is a sandwich. Cause like, I count it a sandwich. Because so like the buns are separate. Let's say you say a hamburger, right? Yeah. You take the meat out and you put chicken, right? It's the same thing, it's just different meat, right? But you call it chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. See? So, it's the same thing. I think it's the same. But, but you know, the it, bun is not separate in a hot dog sandwich. <laughs> unless you separate it yourself. Does it have to be separate? Because it's still say the same. For me, it's still I the think same. So. Well, I mean, yeah, for me too. But a lot of people are kind of uh, trying to argue, but the hot dog is not a sandwich because. Uh... Why do you have to argue? Just I know, it, right? If, if the food is good, why argue? How about this? Do you prefer putting. You put the ketchup on, right? But have you ever tried like dipping it? I, I like oh, dipping? I think no, I did it no, once. No, you put a ketchup twice. on your plate and you just dip it. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I feel like it's more convenient because sometimes when you have so much uh, stuff on your hot dog, it just falls out. That's true. You make a mess, right? That's true. And sometimes, you know, the hot dog is kind of bigger than the bun, which is I don't like. Oh, yeah. That's I, I, bread. Yeah, that's I always it. like having the hot dog inside a bun, not like, you know, like both ends coming out on both sides. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I like that. You like you, that? You bite the end of it. Yeah, you, you I guess it meat. works. You just want the meat. You can have it bite it. I mean, uh, if you just want the meat, then you don't get the bun. Yeah, there's different type of meat. So you put in hot dog. You oh have, yeah, like, oh man, the chicken hot dog. dog. Yeah, chicken, chicken tur hot dog. Turkey, turkey, turkey hot dog. dog. Turkey dog. Oh, you have the uh, the Polish one. What's the classic? It's pork, right? It's pork. it's pork or beef. Yeah, pork or beef. Yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, what do you call it? <laughs> My favorite place to get hot dogs is Costco because it's so cheap. Dollar mm -hmm. fifty for like. Good hot dog, good size of hot dog and a drink. I mean, the hot dog is good, but the bun uh, is meh. <laughs> no, uh, but you're not you're not buying the food for the bun anyway, so it's pretty much like the bun is extra. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I like it. But the thing is, hot dog has this hot dog uh, scent, smell. Yes, after you finish eating it, I, I always get this. It's oh like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's National Hot Dog Day. Put What's your comments? favorite hot dog? Uh, uh, do you like your favorite hot dog? What's your favorite dip? Wait, dip? No. Um, filling in the hot dog sandwich. What else? Filling? I mean, you know, like onions. Uh... And your favorite place to get it. Uh, favorite place to get it. All right. Moving on to the next zero is International oh, Makeup Day. I forgot to put some. Do you have a significant other in your life that puts on a lot of makeup? A lot? No, not, not a lot. Or spend a lot of time putting on makeup. Well, since lipstick is part of the picture right there, yes, she does put lipstick. But as far as the rest, uh, not really. Really? Yeah. So for me... <sighs> Your rest, so... My significant other <laughs> takes around like 30 to an hour. 30 minutes to an hour. Is she using all of those? I mean, have you seen all of those? Yeah, she makes her eyes. Wait a minute, are, are, is this picture her stuff? She, she makes her <laughs> eyebrow. Then she put on her makeup, concealer, all that stuff. Okay. Then her lipsticks. <sighs> See, the thing about makeup is it, it kind of enhances someone's beauty, but everyone shouldn't forget uh, the beauty starts with us. Inner. Inner, you know? Well, I'm just saying, like, for <laughs> me, for us guys, right? What yeah. would we do? We wash our face, put on our clothes, and we're good. Just make sure we have pants on. Yeah, but but not, but not but not all guys are like that too. I mean, I know someone who's actually putting, well, not these kinds of makeup, but you know, like putting something in their face before they leave no, no. Uh, well, at home. Let's just say for us uh, dirty guys, you and me, right? <laughs> dirty guys. We just, we just wash our face, put on our clothes and... More like lazy. Uh, yes, lazy. Lazy guys. Uh, when we wake up, we just want to, you know, we just got to double check if our, both of our eyes, our eyes are open and then we just stand up and uh, take a shower and go. So every time when we set uh, like a mm -hmm. dinner, I usually plan on like an hour or two heads, two mm -hmm. hours ahead, just to make sure she has enough time to do her makeup and stuff like that. Oh. So while she do her makeup, I'm just like, like sitting there, just on my phone. It's like, are you done? <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. I try not to say that. Are you done? It, it makes me mad. Oh. <laughs> right. Well. Okay. So the makeup, right? Um. It's a, it's a, it's an art too because you have to know how to mix the color well. That's your true. Eyeliner, the color choice, and match your skin tone. And maybe a lot of people will think, well, yeah, this is pretty much like uh, for for women or yeah, for yeah. female, right? Yeah. But uh, makeup in general, if we t if we're talking about makeup in general, we're, we can also talk about lo those makeup artists to make other people look different in movies. There yes. you go. That uh, what's uh, special uh, effects? Yes. 
uh, they have like professional makeup artists, you know. Like for zombies. You know? I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, name you guys one character. Well, Tom Savini. Okay. He's one. I was gonna say Yondu, but maybe not a lot of people know Yondu. <laughs> That's makeup right there because they had to color his oh, how face. About this? You probably know this uh, Michael Jackson Thriller. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Michael hey. Jackson Thriller. That is makeup right there. He's gray Turn him and black into zombie. To make right? him more looking more skinnier like yeah. a zombie. So it's kind of like a makeup special effects too. Mm -hmm. And it is an art where you have to go to school for cosmetology or a beautician. Yeah. Right. So I mean, let's say you're a guy and you can uh, you don't really prefer apply makeup, then you can learn more about how uh, these makeup artists, professional makeup artists in Hollywood, apply yeah, special effects. Yeah. Uh, those makeup to make it more realistic for a character, which is very awesome. Or like you, you know? probably know, like Thanos. There's no oh, such thing. yeah, yeah. There's, there's no such thing as a, a what? Oh, no, you eight know what? foot tall, purple looking dude. But, but I think Thanos is more of a CGI because uh, the person who played him is not really that big. No, well, there's a practical effects too, too. Okay, they all do right. Part of it, and the rest they do CGI. Uh, any characters from Star Trek? That had like makeup. They do like like those different um, aliens. Alien race. No, oh, that's that's true. makeup aliens, right there. Aliens, yeah. Star, Star Wars. Wars. I mean, come on, Star Wars. There you go. Look at Palpatine, the Emperor Palpatine. Oh yeah, that is a lot of makeup and hairstyle, makeup. by the way. Because <laughs> after what? After he got uh, Force Lightning, his face was all disfigured. Mm -hmm. They had to do makeup for it. Because no one looks like him in real life. They had to make a little bit. It's makeup. really amazing. It's really amazing what a makeup can do. Right. Yeah. So after you know, waiting for her to put on her makeup after 30 minutes, right? Uh, the restaurant canceled on us and we had to go. Oh, canceled you guys. So oh, we, no. So we stay at home to eat some TV dinner. You like that segue? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, no, because no, I was thinking uh, it would have been better if you introduced makeup first and then TV dinner and then maybe you do another segue for hot dog. Wait, what? No. Because you had the hot dog at first and I'm like, oh, hot dog first observer. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, okay. But TV dinner, I'm okay with that. I'm actually a uh, very convenient type of meal. It's thanks very, to this invention. It's very cheap too. Mm -hmm. It's like what, two, three dollars? Probably. Well, sometimes it can be less. You yeah, know? Can depending. Be less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you have those Hungry Man meals that are like $5. Yeah. They look bigger. <laughs> hungry Man. You know, growing up, uh, you know, for the working family, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have The family, mom and dad, don't have time to cook dinner. And this is so convenient. You just pop it out of the freezer, put it in the microwave, and, you know, you, have, you have a good meal. Not a good meal, but. Uh, a meal that's good enough to I mean, it, yes, yes. I mean, so you, uh, to, to, sat, to satisfy your hunger, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, of you, course, it's not recommended for you to always do it every day. You know, it's still better to have like home cooked meal yes. once in a while. It's more, healthier. Uh, healthier. Because I mean, look at this. Look at the fried chicken. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Or the mashed potatoes is pretty sad, too. <laughs> or the, the brownie is pretty sad. That's the brownie. Oh, that's brownie. Okay. Then. And the corn is sad. Anything to look about this looks sad. But hey, it's food. Yeah. But hey, I mean, like. Uh, we're in a crunch, we have a budget, it's there for you. I believe we already talked about this last year, right? And if I remember correctly, this yeah, TV dinner came uh, to to popularity around 1950s, 1960s? I think so. When television actually were were a thing already or started becoming more common in households. Because, like, you know, like nowadays, when you, I have TV everywhere. You have TV in your mm -hmm. dining room, you have TV in your living room, you have TV in your room, right? Right then, the, the TV was like mostly situated inside the living room. Or family room, yeah. Yeah, the family uh -huh. room. And, you know, people want to watch TV while they want to eat. And yeah, They can't yeah. really do it when they can drag a TV to the dining room. Yeah. So they bring I mean, food to the living room. Okay, sorry, before, TV is like as big as a... Uh, oh, what? My, <laughs> my Siri activated? Did I did I say Siri? That's so weird. Yeah, I said TV. 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 But yeah, TV is like big it and then the big. screen is kind of small, but like the whole uh, appliance itself, you know, like like electrical uh, components components and stuff it's like, like that. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. I don't know how to describe how big it is. It's probably like... Uh, the size is big, but the screen is small, <laughs> so... It's Which kind is of kind of funny. You know your your trash bin that you have, right? Just think of like four of them in a square. Yeah, yeah, like that. It's like kind of like that big. And heavy too. Yeah, it's very heavy. You need like a more than a dolly to lift it up. But back to the TV dinner, right? I even though they're unhealthy, they're very unhealthy to be honest. I find it kind of like a comfort food. It yeah, like yeah. like we said a while ago, it's just to satisfy a hunger. It's mostly uh, mostly to have time uh, to prepare food yourself. Yeah, it's mostly the fried chicken one that I get. Fried chicken one. 
with uh, macaroni. I think I got like what what are what what TV got, dinner have you seen? Like I, I got burger, oh, like the, burger? The, the patty and then the mashed potato and then the gravy and the minus the corn. And oh, the, you mean it's kind of like a, like a steak dinner? Kind yeah, of yeah, like a yes, steak dinner. Yeah, without the bread, huh? Without the bread. Without the bread, though. It's like, uh -huh. I think it's called so Salisbury you, steak. So you get the gravy, you get the mashed potato, you get the the patty. Mm. You know, I think there's corn too, but there's no brownie. Yeah, you know, besides this is more like the when you look at the picture here, right? It's more like a multi food, right? There's more food food to it, right? Mm -hmm. We have TV dinner, just one meal, one entree. Yeah. Yeah, you have like spaghetti. I haven't tried spaghetti you in have, TV dinner. Uh, beef stroganoff. You have. There you go. Oh, uh, uh, fish sticks. Fish, yes, fish there you sticks. go. You have, what do you call it? Too, uh, chicken Alfredo. Chicken Alfredo, yeah, yes, there you I go. That too. There's a lot of TV dinners. You usually go to the frozen food aisle of the grocery store. By the way, this is like American style uh, TV dinner. Because, I mean, you know, when, when TV dinner uh, got famous, uh, different varieties also uh, came up, you know. Now there's Asian TV dinner with rice. Yes. And then we got some, uh, not popcorn chicken, but like orange chicken, for example, you know? Yeah, you can have popcorn chicken too. Oh, they do? Yeah, yeah. okay. They have a lot, really. Because you see the popularity of. Uh, then you get the Italian TV dinner, which is spaghetti. spaghetti. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I love TV dinners, but I probably eat it like when I'm like really hungry or <laughs> in a pinch. Or yeah, if if you don't have time to to prepare food, but hey, because of these convenient meals, a lot of a lot of people uh, avoided being hungry. So true, yeah, because it's affordable, it's very affordable. Exactly. Right. Moving on to today history, we are going to talk about in 2008 the Large Hadron Collider. Oh, see. Is powered up. Yes, LHC. So. Now, I remember this. You remember that part? You know, people were like scared. Uh, like, yeah, I remember the controversy around this because of uh, people. Big... Here's the thing about the history, you know. I mean, we always mention that or not, not, not always, but most of the time when, when things like this comes out. New technology that you are unfamiliar we, with. We kind of mention it throughout the history. Humankind is not very welcoming on new ideas, which is, I think, uh, it, it goes both ways. Like, of course, uh, that's how us humans survive by being cautious, right? Um, and at the same time, if you, you explore, yeah, if you don't, if, if you just keep yourself in the dark and not really explore, then you're not going to move, move forward as a civilization, yes. right? So, when this <laughs> was first, uh, uh, was announced to You're gonna make a giant black hole. Yes, exactly. No, <laughs> mini black hole. Oh, mini black hole. Because <laughs> what they were doing, they was taking like little uh, small particles, like you can't see with a microscope, right? Much smaller than usual, right? They were sending through a huge tube in a circle, right? And they will make them collide with each other. That's, That's what why it's called a collider. Right. Right. So in that case, you're destroying <laughs> these small particles, and you will find more smaller parts. Of so, a... so why do they do that? So they try to discover how we are made yeah what's smaller than a proton what's smaller than this what's smaller what's smaller and what is you know the smallest you can go yeah so basically for our viewers the reason behind this idea is that uh scientists think that if they break these two atomic particles apart yes. they could find or learn more atomic actually yeah, yeah, oh there you go subatomic which is smaller than atomic yes level and you know, atomic level is really, I mean, come on. It's small already. Like, it's like really, really small. Because the so. first scare that we had was uh, back in World War II, right? We split an atom. Mm -hmm. And you know what we got? We got the atomic bomb. Yeah. And thinking that people remembering this and hearing smaller particles, smaller objects Explosion. And oh. are being smashed and broken apart, it kind of worried the public. But hey. And these are really smart scientists, right? And they know what's the outcome of might might be, and they try to prevent this kind of catastrophic events. You know, I actually didn't follow up after this. Uh, did they did they learn anything new? Yeah, they, they discovered like okay. more smaller particles, or like confirmed some theories that they had. Okay, if, if I wasn't mistaken, the the particle like the, they're trying to learn the God is the, particle or the Higgs boson or something. Boson. Boson. Higg Higg boson. Higg boson. Higg boson. Higg boson. There you go. Yes. So they call it the God particle and stuff like that, but you know, it's just for a fancy way of saying. Yeah. Because we try to understand how we came to be, right? There's always something smaller, and there's always or or bigger. yeah, and this one has something to do with the start of the universe too. Like yeah, uh, they're like, trying to uh, get more proof uh, about the Big Bang, right. the theory of Big Bang, because up until now it's still a theory. Yeah, because anything else. And a TV show. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> 
It's a theory. So when you think of splitting an atom, it creates so much energy, right? Well, you split something smaller, will it create some more, much more energy? Will it create a universe? Yeah. I don't know. So we keep exploring the the boundaries of science. And if something goes wrong, we can always call the Avengers. <laughs> Moving on to birthday. Oh. In 1941, we have Gunpei Yokai. You know who, what he did? Uh, no. He made the Game Boy. Oh, really? Uh, wow, that's cool. The OG great Game Boy. From Nintendo. Of course Nintendo. Who do you think made the Game Boy? Okay, well, because uh, timeline-wise, the NES went first before the Game Boy. Right, so, so he, he's the one that okay. he made. The so game. he worked for Nintendo? Yes. Okay. Well, well yeah, <laughs> Nintendo is... Game Boy is Nintendo. Thank you, Mr. Yokoi. Uh, you know, childhood days. Uh, yeah, no. Like... You know what I'm talking about? What Game Boy I'm talking about? I'm no. Talking about the original one, the green yeah, yeah. one. The gray one with the green screen. The, the, yeah, the, the the case turns yellow over time. Yes, <laughs> yes. It, it, it discolors. I love the... I don't know why. The, the gray color. It's the plastic material they use. The, I mean, the, you know. The color scheme of it. The gray with the red and the green. Wait, there's no red? What are you talking about? Isn't the button red? Hmm... I guess the start... Or the select one, but the screen is green. No, I know the green the screen is green. Yeah, and sure. it's gray. Yeah. So then we have the Game Boy Color, mm -hmm. which was a game changer because it was smaller, much smaller, slimmer than the, the original Game Boy, and it was in color. And it's, uh, yeah, it's that another thing where the, the device is big, but the screen is small. Yeah, like yeah. Then you have the Game Boy Advance, and it was sideways now. Before, before the first two Game Boy, right? It was oh, you hold it horizontally, right? Mm -hmm. Vertically, I mean. Then you have Game Boy Color, you hold it vertically as well, like this vertically, right? I just added colors. Yeah, and then the Game yep. Boy Advance was on the sideways, so mm -hmm. it, right? So, like I said, it's most of my childhood right there. That's literally my childhood. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, the idea of bringing like uh, certain games uh, in your pocket is just amazing. No, there was Game Boy Pocket too. I forgot about that. Too. Yeah, yeah. It uh, it's smaller. foldable. It's foldable. No, that's the Game Boy SP. Oh, that's the SP. My, never mind. What's Pocket? Pocket is a Pocket smaller. is not smaller. I think it's smaller than Game Boy Advance. It's not a Game Boy. It's smaller than a Game Boy Color. No, I can't remember. There, okay. There, there, there is a Game Boy. Uh, pocket. Oh, Advance is the vertical. I mean, horizontal one. Yeah, that's the one that was in purple. Okay. Yeah. That was yeah. a purple one with no backlight. Oh my gosh, I remember playing that because. No, I'm pretty sure the Advance had a backlight. You, you have to uh, buy the add-on. No, that was the color. No, no, no. Yeah. Game Boy Color didn't have backlight. Backlight only uh, started on the SP. Yeah, because I remember I got a, I got a, unless. They made a new version of Game Boy Advance, but I remember having Game Boy Advance, and I had to buy the uh, the thing. The little worm light. Yeah. The worm light, yeah. <laughs> that you have to attach. So, you have the SP, they have the Advance, and because of the SP, right? S no, SP came after the Advance. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because it had a backlight. Yeah, because of the SP, right? We have the Nintendo Dual Screen, the DS. The DS. They have the DS XL. And then the 3DS, which the 3DS. is kind of like added 3D, which nobody actually used. No. You know, I mean, I used it for first two hours, and then I'm like... I was like, I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, why, why do I need this? It's so cool, it's affordable, right? Yeah. Then, you know what's so the next one? I think the, the successor for the game, I don't think they'll make new Game Boys. You know what they'll make? Oh, no. This, the Switch is basically the new Game Boy. I mean, they, they still make... I, would, I guess it's not Nintendo anymore, but there's a lot of third-party companies who make retro games. Or retro game console. I think, to, for me personally, right, I think because of the console and the handheld, right, they kind of merge together with the Switch. Yeah. In terms of Nintendo, so I don't think we'll see another Game Boy. Probably not, yeah. but we'll see. <coughs> yeah. I mean, they made the Switch Lite already, which oh, yeah. is uh, the smaller version of the Nintendo Switch that doesn't get plugged into the TV. Yeah. So that's the Game Boy <laughs> right, right there. So happy birthday to Mr. Yokoi. And thank you for my job. Oh my gosh. I remember like four AA batteries, was it, or six? It was four. This is four, but only lasts for three hours. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then rechargeable batteries are not a thing before Game Boy. Advance. Yeah, so it was like. Wait, did uh, Advance yeah. use batteries? Yeah. Uh -huh. Advance use batteries? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the SP didn't use batteries. No, the SP has its own battery. What's the SP sound for, anyways? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to look it up. But yeah, Game Boy is our. Right, sorry, On the last for three hours, we were playing Mario. Oh, that's oh, pretty man. awesome. So, moving on to cultural spotlight, <laughs> we're going to Guyana. What is Guyana? So, Guyana 
is a country in Central America, South America, in that mm-hmm. area. And it is rich in its cultural influence. You have African influence. Influences. Have, so there's Indian, a lot. Indian. Indian as in the country of India. In Southeast Asia, you have the Amerian Indians. Amerian Indians are more like the Native Americans, right? Okay. Right. Then you have the British. Of course, the British That's is everywhere. Yeah, the Portuguese. The Portuguese oh, wow. was other country. Spanish. No, not Spanish. In that area, the peninsula, the yeah, Iberian yeah. peninsula. You have the Chinese. Oh, really? Chinese are everywhere, dude. Wow. Same thing with the British. They're everywhere. You have the Creole. Creole is like the French kind of like Caribbean people. Creole is like... Uh, French. Kind of like French. Yeah. yeah. You have Latin America. Latin I was going to say it's like Sandy. Sandy talks Creole. Yes. Yeah. You have, you have <laughs> the Dutch culture. That's more like European, right? Yeah. So in Guyana, they have so many cultures into it. And... That's a lot. And it's that's, reflected, that's amazing. And it's reflected by the holidays too. They celebrate some holidays that are like typically celebrate for European holidays like Christmas, oh, man. And Easter. That's European holidays. Then celebrate some southeastern holidays like Holi, which is a festival of the light, which is an Indian fest, uh, festival uh, holiday. You think there's going to be a point in time where there's going to be a place or a country that had all the world's culture? Yes, and it's called America, dude. And then what's going to happen is it's called America. And what's going to happen is there's gonna be observances every day or holiday every day and nobody's going to go to work anymore that'd be the dream <laughs> <laughs> that'd be the dream so like uh like all culture right they have their own folklore and mythology right? yes so the Guyanese uh folklore is similar to the caribbean folklore so they take some aspect from it incorporate their own they mix it with a little bit of african some indian so you think it's like you see some like Vishnu. Oh, that's cool. Or like, what, what's it? What's it? Brahma, Brahma uh, the Buddha, something yeah. like that too. You have American Indians, American Indians. So like the the spirits, the spirits, the, the, uh, the earth, the wind spirits. You have your chants, your rituals, mm-hmm. your dances, your rain dances. You have your British and European beliefs, which is more like Christianity, Catholicism, okay. orthodoxy, and stuff like that too. And in terms of its uh, sports that Guyana loves is... Football. No, it's cricket. Oh, know? yeah, yeah. I forgot. How do I even forget <laughs> about that? I fo- I uh, showcase that on Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And cricket is usually the pastime for the uh, British and India mm-hmm. and Pakistan. They love cricket. So you understand because of the Indian influence into Guyana, right? They adopted this sport. Cricket. Right, right. They even have like, I mean, it's a big thing to them to the point that they have their own association for cricket. Yeah. So <laughs> basketball, football, they play it too, but it's mostly cricket. Cricket. How do you play cricket? It's kind of like baseball, but it's kind of like uh, baseball. instead of a bat, you it's have more this flatter. paddle. Yeah. It's uh-huh. a paddle, yeah. So that is Guyana. And moving on to the stuff of the day, we have first the plan of the day. We I think your shoulder just taco. popped. My shoulder yeah, I heard it a while ago. Oh, it's just air bubble. You know you have air bubble traps in your joints? You just... It happens to me every time I wake up. Like, if I get off bed, I'm like... <coughs> oh. I don't know. It's like a... Oh, see that? Yeah. You're old. We're old. Well, not see that. Hear that? So, we are going to talk tulip. about... So beautiful. It's I know, tulip. dude. So, it's perennial, meaning it can last more than two years. It survives up to two years or plus. It's herbaceous. I mean, there's no woody stem above ground right because mm-hmm. you know some plants there their stem is a little bit thicker it's more woodier but this one's more it know. looks more amazing if the uh the tulip farmer or gardener actually you know kind of arranged the colors by rows pretty awesome like this one you know we get like... there's a reason why though why for commercial selling oh they have this specific uh seed that you plant for this specific I color know. just pretty awesome it's like you're making and your own line certain line. certain colors Costs more money, sells more money, sells for more money. Because mm-hmm. we have this tulip mania where everyone wanted tulip. I want a yeah. green tulip. Is there a green tulip? Yeah, I think so. Behind the yellow one. No, that's just a stem. Oh man, your eyes are really bad, bro. It's bl- hey, you can't blame me. The background is blurry. Come on. Well, it's blurry. I can still see it. It's like you should go to the DMV, man. Your eyes like. 15, what, 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 what about the what about the one next after the purple one? That's green. No, it's white. Oh. It's red and white, dude. Okay. Anyways, the name tulip, right? Derived from... It, it, it's sterilized. It's derived from a Persian word for a turban. Kind of like a turban, you know? The headdress. Kind of Cause like the resembles bulb. it. Yeah, yeah, the bulb is kind of like a turban you, you tie uh, up in your head. Uh, so, there's, they are they originally stretched from Europe to Central Asia. And they became... 
they became uh, naturalized and uh, cultivated throughout the world, right? Because uh-huh. people love tulips. I love tulips. Too. They're pretty, and they're 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 flowering. They start to flower around in spring, and they become dormant. So they kind of like sleep in the summer, mm-hmm. and you know it's a cycle. You just wait till spring for it to get boom. Papa. So that's the tulip. And why are we talking about the tulip? Well, they have a specific uh, chemical in them. You know, I can't go without saying the chemical. <laughs> it's an anthocyanin, which you know contribute to the color. When you think of tulips, they don't have one, just one. Color. Usually, when you mention a chemical, that's going to be our theme. So probably, yeah. No, that's our theme. Maybe that's our theme. Maybe. And when we right, to the see. animal of the day, we have the coney. Coney bunnies. Well, the thing is, people we probably know it as rabbits, right? Yeah. But the word coney, it predates it. People called them coney way before they called them rabbits. Really? Yes. And the thing is, these conies are specifically, more specifically, um, what do you call it? Given the name is given to the European rabbits. Okay. So these are mostly in the Euro, uh, Europe area, mostly the Iberian Peninsula. We talk about that for Guyana. Iberian is mostly uh, the region where you have Spain and Portugal. Spain, yeah, Spain, Spain Portugal, Portugal, right? Mm-hmm. And southern France. So these little guys, they're. They're usually underground, they have warrens. Warrens are basically like a bunch of tunnels underground that they live and, you know, live their lives. Unless they go up above ground to eat some food. And you know what they like to eat when they're above food? Tulips? Uh, yes. Okay, very good. So there is a connection there. So they like to eat tulips. Oh man, but those are beautiful flowers. I know, but I guess they're tasty. Getting eaten by beautiful creatures. You know, some flowers are used in salads, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that is the coney. But we know as the European rabbit. Both ways. Both ways. Both ways. I'm gonna try to uh, use the word coney now. Yeah. People say, what are you talking about? Coney Island? The hot yeah. dog? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we went to our day, we have tulip fields near the Hague. Oh, Cologne. it's not Van Gogh Monet. today, huh? Okay. okay. So the thing is, I like Monet too because his style is similar to Van Gogh. The strokes? The strokes. Okay. So that, uh, typically, when you think of the Hague, you think of like Dutch Netherlands with the windmills and the nice fields of. Tulips, as you can see, the tulips never in. We see like regions of tulips. It's not just one color. Mm-hmm. It's always multicolor. Multicolor, very Pretty good. awesome. Yes. So there's a reason why it's multicolor. There's always chemicals in this body, right? Uh-huh. And the chemical that we're gonna talk about for a science fact of the day is delphinidin. 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 Okay. So there's 15 carbons. 11 hydrogens and 7 oxygen. Delphinidin is uh, anthocyanin. So, anthocyanin is kind of something you've seen in red cabbage. We oh, about that. okay. It's like an indicator for color, right? And given the, the plants, the pigment, the color, right? Mm-hmm. It's also antioxidant. Delphinidin gives uh, the blue hue in flowers and like viola. And the flower, delphinium, too. Delphinium is a flower. And it can be found in a way you call it in tulips too. Tulips mm-hmm. have a tu- tulipin in, it's an in, in, and it produces like this red, bluish red color in, of a grape that you found in a Cabernet. It's okay. Like a wine. That's the color of the purplish wine. You can mm-hmm. find this, uh, this chemical in it, the finidin. I wonder if this. You can uh, find grapes, you find cranberries, that, that rich, dark. Okay. Color. No, well, yeah, Come definitely grapes because there's green grapes. Right. Uh, what else? Green grapes. Red grapes. Red grapes. White grapes. White grapes. Yeah. There's white grapes? Yeah, there's white oh, grapes. Oh, that's cool. You that's make cool. white wine. You make white wine. There's blue grapes. Uh, that's blueberries. No, 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 no. There's that's purple. Like, that's just purple. Purple grapes. There you go. Yeah, blue grapes. Purple grapes. Yeah. Concords. They're concords. So, like I said, Delphinidin. Uh, I can't pronounce this. I'm, 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 I'm so close to saying dolphins. <laughs> well, Delphinidin. This chemical is an anthocyanin, which is pH, sens- uh, pH sensitive, meaning you can test if it's basic or acidic, right? Oh, that's yeah, cool. So it's that's a natural cool. indicator. You you dip it in, you put in like I don't know, acid, it'll change colors. So, hey, this is acid. Put something that's basic, right? Hey, this is basic. So it's an indicator. And it usually turns blue when it's in acid. Okay. Right. So that's okay. Delphinidin. Delphinidin. There we go. Moving on to where the day we have Hugh. Oh. No way. He's our ID guy. 
That's H U Y. Oh, H-U-Y. that's we. All right. E. <sighs> you say we now. I can't pronounce it now. <laughs> it's in my head. It's Hugh. 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 Hugh oh. Like Hugh Jackman. Hugh. Oh my gosh. That's H U G H. Yeah, I know. H-U-E. But I mean, just just so I can help you out how to pronounce this. No, you just confused me with our IT guy already. A color or shade? Yes, it's a man color shade. When we talk about like uh, hue, colors, like, saturation, tulips. There's many colors. So you have different hues of a different color. Like you don't have just have just green, right? Mm-hmm. You have dark There's gonna green, be a different shade. You have different olive tint, green, different saturation. You have navy green. Wait, navy green. Sea green. Mm-hmm. You have uh, what other greens do you know? Uh, evergreen. Forest green, lime oh, green. You said evergreen. I, I thought you said every color green. Oh, <laughs> that's lazy. That's a lazy answer. Uh, you uh, have earth that, green. You have that green, bright green right there. There's yeah. a jade green. Well, not jade green, but like the green emerald. that they use for. Oh yeah, emerald. There you go. Emerald. Bam. Uh, not, not emerald. What's amazing about colors is that it's not just about the color you see, but also it, uh, you know the, the shade, shade, the, the tint, light, saturation, saturation, brightness. Saturation, brightness. Pretty awesome. That's what hue is. Different shades of color, different color or shade. So, what's the theme of the week? Colors, tulips. Colors, tulips. Because the bunny, Hugh? the coney eats uh, the co- the coney, the European <laughs> rabbit eats tulips. We have the chemical that's found in tulips that changes colors, and the color of the tulips is a different kind of hue. Hue, hue. So it's tulips. And that is the show for this week. Bravo, bravo. We finish. We got a very colorful background right there. Scarborough's logo. is a hue of blue. A hue of blue, yes. What's your favorite blue color? Baby blue? No, light blue. Light blue. Light blue. We like light colors. So I know your favorite color is green, right? It's mm-hmm. kind of like olive green or military green. I... Uh, I would say more like um, bluish green. Bluish green? Yeah. Like teal? Cyan? Cyan, yeah. Mine is uh, like a deep color red, like a wine color. Oh, wow. Burgundy? That's my favorite color. Okay. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite hue? And put in a comment below, and we'll see you guys Monday. Next week. I almost said next month, but (laughs) next week. Monday. We'll see you guys next Monday. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.